Hi everyone, and welcome to this Petra Kucha presentation. I originally delivered it live at the School of Health Sciences Away Day in June of 2020, and this is just a backup. And it's ways of enhancing your Moodle uh, virtual learning environments. The first question for you to consider is um, how your students see those sites. When they sign into them, what is it that they see? Are they being encouraged to go in um, a site for a community of learners together? Or is it just a repository where they're going to find a whole load of PDF articles, their handbook and some PowerPoints or something? So what is it that your students will see? But also from your own point of view, how much satisfaction do you get in actually developing these, especially with looking at new ways of adding in um, various resources into them? Or do you just go from one year to the other and just treat the Moodle site exactly the same, that you put the same stuff on year in and year out? That's really important to consider. Because there is a big gap um, that we're going to find, especially in relation to COVID-19, where we're encouraging our students to do so much more online learning, the gap we've got is between their current awareness of Moodle. So if they only ever sign in just to get some articles or the handbook or to check out dates for um, their assignment, for example, they're not going to be very proactive in accessing it to do any other learning. So even when we're talking about the flipped classroom technique and you want to do some pre-learning before an online event, lots of them won't even know that the pre-learning is there unless you're going to alert them to this somehow. So it's really important that we get them to make this shift between seeing Moodle as something static and that they only access for course dates to something that they're going to really engage in. Now, how much time is this going to take you all? I've, I've got to be honest here, it is very, very time consuming to do all of this, um, especially as you're adding in more and more resources, making short videos like this. This is about the sixth time I've started this one. So it does take time to do it, okay? And that's going to be one of the restraining factors. So here I've done a little force field analysis, looking at the things that will hinder us wanting to develop our Moodle sites, but hopefully we can overcome this with all the positive things that we can do. And here are so many of them right at the top of this page. And my favourite little saying from Griffiths and Burns is if our students don't learn the way we teach, we need to learn to teach the way they learn. And I think very much so in relation to uh, Moodle, we've got to rethink our whole pedagogy and andragogy about how we do this. My favourite icon here, Miss Jean Brodie, um, with her creme de la creme. Yes, think of yourselves as the creme de la creme. We always get good results from our NSS studies, um, but we, we've got to make those even better now, especially with the challenges of COVID. So when the students are signing in, is this something that they're going to actually see? This uh, particular bland image here of Moodle, which is the basic template we all get every year, that we then have to build on and and change. If you're keeping it very similar to what it looks like here, then I'd suggest that maybe there are lots of other things you can do. With our school site, for example, look at this particular image here. So this is how the school Moodle site is looking. Now, how have I got from that deadly dull boring template we get to this? And that's what I'll show you throughout the remainder of this presentation. Okay, so it's making it far more dynamic and a place where the students do want to learn. You'll notice that on the school Moodle site, I've even included the, um, the faculty Twitter account. So you can do that. You can put Twitter accounts especially for all the different nursing and midwifery and paramedic groups that they've, they've all got their own uh, Twitter accounts. So you can either put those in or if there are particular conferences happening at certain times of year, there's nothing stopping you adding those in as well. Now, you have not been Zoom bombed here, okay? This isn't some porn site you're looking at. This is, this is just one of my courses. So how would you get from that bore, boring image uh, to looking at this, where it's the tiled effect? Um, so the next slide is actually going to show you how you can do it and it's so easy and it just takes a matter of seconds in which to change it to this image. Okay, and here are those three little steps. First of all, when you click the cog for um, editing your site, you just need to uh, click on where it says edit settings. 
Then you go to course format and in course format you choose this one which is going to give you the little grid view. Okay, there are others as well so play around with them and see which one works best for you. You'll notice within the school site, because I've used that as a, as, a, as a template that some of you may want to uh, follow and emulate here. What I've done is to put a picture in representing the theme of each block. Then I've just put in usually just one um, Moodle book and you can put everything into the Moodle books. Then there's another one which is the discussion forum and then I've put it in a file which is where I hide all of my PDFs or PowerPoints and that type of thing and I'll explain that in a moment. But when it comes to the discussion forum, again put some pictures in, put some little words in. Remember you can, uh, instead of typing, you can actually create little videos now which allow you to record up to two minutes of video and that's far more personal to your student. But from September 20 onwards you have to put in um, a, a typewritten version of that as well. So if you can't get closed caption coming up on the videos, you do need to type that up as well and that's a legal requirement on us. In the hidden folder, what I actually do here is to dump all the files that I want to show in the Moodle book. So you can use this as a repository, you create subfolders in it, put everything that you want in there. So whether it's your handbook or articles or PowerPoints, put them into there. Now you'll see on the school website in the technology enhanced learning section because there were so many things to put in I've even created a few different Moodle books but look just by shifting them by putting them in a different uh, format again it's playing around with this to make it look more appealing as a very deadly dull boring Moodle site you know trying to make it look more appetizing to people then once you click inside the books rather than just um, putting some documents in which you can't do you can't put a PowerPoint in there for example so what I've done here in the bottom right I just typed a bit of text saying what it's all about I've put in a picture and then I've put the hyperlink linking back in to that hidden folders uh, section so when they click on that picture it'll actually open up the PowerPoint and I've embedded a spark page and this is how to embed resources so whether it's YouTube or TED talks or spark pages this is how you embed okay it's really easy click on the HTML code button delete the couple of little letters that come up get the embed code from whatever the resource is so a Prezi a TED talk YouTube and then you just embed it in there and click to save okay um, but there are also lots of other Moodle resources when you look at the list that's showing up here there are so many others uh, certainly I think of myself I've only tried about 50% of these or less so it would be great for me to learn from the rest of you and for us all to learn from each other what all these other things do a SCORM package and it shows it on this very next slide here. A SCORM package is when you find a course developed by somebody else. So say for example, the Social Care Institute for Excellence, which has tons of stuff, especially around um, mental health issues, safeguarding, a um, whole load of resources there. They allow their courses to be used by others free of charge. And that's where you get a SCORM package. So you'll see the little um, orange box up there. That's a SCORM resource. You just embed it from somebody else's web Website, and when the students click on that it opens up the other person's website within your own okay so a really good way of sharing excellent learning from elsewhere that's it the six minutes and 40 seconds are up um, I hope you've enjoyed this little Pecha Kucha and certainly I'd recommend you doing this with your students okay ta-ta